Coming up on tonight's episode, I can't tell you because Matt doesn't even know yet. And if I told you now, it wouldn't be much of a surprise, would it? But just know Sean Tember continues on a new episode right now. This is Up for Debate, episode number 187, recorded September 10th, 2020. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of Up for Debate, uh, the debate podcast where the two of us agree on everything. I'm Sean Jennings, joined as always uh, by a guy who is just jacked for September. It's Matt Mariani. Yeah, I, I you know, Sean Tember, it only comes once a year. And yes. uh, what a Sean Tember it has been so far. Last week, I got to explore a mall and go on an RPG adventure, which mm-hmm. uh was was I have to say, Sean? Really, just a just a treat. It was just a treat to do that. Um, I'm looking forward to more surprises well, that might come my way tonight. And that's why, Matt, tonight you're going to be exploring a soon to be defunct theme park. Can you Whoa. bring it? No, just, like, just imagine I do that like every <laughs> week for four weeks. I welcome it. Just all of the declining American institutions. Honestly. Yeah, if, if 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 we did that every week, Sean, I would be totally fine with that. If that if you told me, guess what? I think that's what the podcast is going to be now. I'd say okay. But I do like I would the be idea. Totally fine with that. Like in the background of each of them, there's like a minor character who keeps reoccurring, and that's the key. And then it's like all one big story. That would be pretty awesome. That reminds me of our our D and D adventures over on on game nights. Yes. It's, uh, Well, I will say it's much easier to plan one night's worth of adventures than it is a A saga. Ugh, too much. (laughs) Never again. Never again. But Matt, the good news is tonight, far more relaxed. It is a classic topic and talk about it episode. No research needed. Uh, And I wanted to put something together that harkens back to the very early days of this show, Matt. Do you remember the origin of Up for Debate? Oh, do I ever. It's a great story if you want to tell it to the folks at home. So it... It used to be a podcast where we uh, had debates and um, actually disagreed about everything. Then eventually over time, Sean and I mind melded into just one being, yep. one uh, one conscience, if you will. And now we just agree on everything. So really the title has, has been a misnomer from the beginning and we like it that way. So, yeah, I'm not sure if it's more or less confusing than the Goldilocks Zone. Uh I- I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna take a stab in the dark here, and I'm gonna guess that what you're getting at is, um, is it? Are we are we doing over under appropriate? Matt, it's back. <laughs> so 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 the origin of the show is Matt and I, college roommates, were we were lame, so we didn't have anything to do, so we just kind of sat around, and we started doing this thing. We started with bands, if I remember correctly, and then moved on to other topics. We would be like, you know, Nickelback overrated underrated or appropriately rated and we would just have a discussion about it i always thought it was interesting because we we kind of pretended like we knew we knew what the zeitgeist was when we had no clue yeah music was not a good place to start for us Mm -hmm. Uh, i guess when we were saying over under or appropriately rated we're really talking about like our how we rate it not I don't know about the the people at large. Sometimes I guess we factored that in. It's very vaguely defined. And that was the problem because when I, when up, uh, when don't panic was such a wild success, I said, I want to do a second show. And I remember I said, that's a fun concept for a show where every week we'll take a topic and determine if it's overrated, underrated, or appropriately rated. We did that for the first two topics, Aaron Sorkin and Marvel movies, and then immediately realized it is not a good way to do a (laughs) podcast. And then it sort of evolved into us just talking about stuff. But Matt, for the last six months, I've been putting together a list. I've been keeping a list on my phone. I've been adding to it of topics I think are worth putting up against the patent pending over, under, or appropriate scale. How long? You've spent the last two set, months? Set, no, since March Madness. Wow. And so, because I, really, I really wanted to make sure they were topics. There's my quick list. But... Um, I want to make sure they were topics that would really fit this, and they were things we hadn't talked about on the show before. And so I got a handful here, Matt. Are you ready? Oh, I'm definitely. Are we, we're just going to rap about them? Yeah, we're just going to go okay. one at a time, and we're going to go till we run out of time. I think it'll be fun. Classic. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to hear your opinions, because some of these things are things we haven't talked about before. Okay, let's do it. All right, Matt. Here's the first one. Matt, overrated, underrated, or appropriately rated hot air balloons? Um, definitely underrated. And why is that? Yeah. 
Strongly underrated. Um, okay. My reasoning for that, when's the last time you've been in a hot air balloon? Never. And when's the last time I've ever been in a hot air balloon? Never. <laughs> I would love to try it. I'm, I'm someone who is also deathly afraid of heights, so probably not a great idea, but I, I think it I think it would be a lot of fun. I think I, it would be one of those things where I would be really, really scared at first, but I say it's very much underrated. I think it could be a fun time. I, I wouldn't say it's overrated because, I mean, I don't know too many people who have ever been in a hot air balloon. It's not really rated at all right now, so it's hard to be over or under nothing. It's honestly, it's something I completely forgot about until just now. I, I don't spend a whole lot of time thinking about hot air ballooning. I, I think Maybe that... it's something that saw its heyday at one point and kind of like, I don't know, faded away. I don't know. Well, Matt, do you know when the first hot air balloon, uh, untethered manned hot air balloon flight was performed? I love how this is just a thing you have queued up, ready to go. I'm on the Wikipedia page. I didn't have this <laughs> actually. I just read it. When? Well, I would say like the probably like 1830 or something. 1783 in Paris, France. Oh, that's uh, that's OK. That's pretty early. I I, uh, I guess there was that famous story, right? Around the earth in 80 days or. Yes. Right. Yes. Which of some of that was done in a hot air balloon. It was very uh, like dirigible Zeppelin-y of its time, sort of that you know, being popular at, mm -hmm. around there. Um, the longest oh, yeah. flight in a hot air balloon uh, was 4,767 miles. Uh, Matt, hot air balloons are vastly overrated. Hot air balloons suck. I'm going to just come right out and say it. They're not good. Okay. I would never go in one, and I don't know why anyone would go in one, because if, if your gimmick is like, oh, I want to see things from high up, they're like 18 better safer, more interesting ways to do it than a hot air balloon. Name one. Hang gliding. I've never been hang gliding. I, I would prefer a hot air balloon. Do you know why, Sean? In a hot air balloon, you have like a, there's a floor, right? There's a, there's something you're standing in. You are being carried, like wafted through the air, like in a in a little basket, essentially. When you're hang gliding, you're just at the mercy of the of the elements. You're at the mercy of the wind. Just you're gonna go wherever the wind takes you. Uh, that's uh, that's, that's I, I exactly... think you have a little bit more control. At least you have the illusion of control when you're in a hot air balloon. You have absolutely no control over a hot air balloon. It has no, at least in a hang glider, you can sort of maneuver it left and right. There's no directionality. All a hot air balloon does is go up and then eventually crash. Now, whether that crashes slowly and soft, it's kind of like uh, skydiving, where it's, at least in skydiving, you can sort of control yourself, but in this, it just it literally just goes. Well, you also can, you can have a picnic lunch in a hot air balloon. That's my, my second argument. You can have a picnic lunch on the ground. Yeah, but that's not as much fun as in the air. Like, and you can't do that when you're hang gliding. On an airplane. Yeah, but then it's then you then you you get the like the airline food and you know you always know that that food tastes terrible because you're up too high. I think the hot air balloon you're still at an altitude where your taste buds are still working. Um, also, you can you can control a hot air balloon with the with the um, pressure, the the air pressure that you put into it. By like, I guess you don't, you can't steer it, but you can like control how it goes up and down and track the wind that way. I don't know. I've never been in a hot air balloon. I don't, don't they have like those sandbags so you like drop the sandbags to go higher and stuff? But again, you only go up or down. You have no, it's just total, if a gust of wind goes, you literally can't do anything about it. Oh well, yeah, it's for its ultimate freedom. I mean... Matt, it's incredibly dangerous. Listen to this statistic. This is going to blow your mind. Between 2000 and 2011, so about a 10-year span there, how many people do you think died in hot air balloon accidents? Uh, probably zero, because nobody really does it anymore. Come on. No. How many people do you think? No, I will say it's more than zero. I mean, Six. it's a 10-year span. Six is a fine number. At, it's five. You're actually pretty close. Two of which got electrocuted <laughs> by power lines, by the way. 
Uh, yeah, I didn't think of that. I didn't think of the power line issue. Yeah, do you know what? Do you know what the the odds of you getting killed in a hot air balloon accident are? What are the odds? 0.1%. Now, that doesn't mean it's safe. That kind of goes <laughs> against my point. Um, about 18% of hot air balloon flights around that time resulted in a minor or worse injury. Um, I would I would venture I mean I'll, I'll take us back to our argument here it's that the we're saying that it's it's uh, whether it's appropriately rated or not and I'm going to say that it's very much underrated still because you don't it's not cool like it's not cool to be like let's go to that hot air balloon like hang gliding people would be like or whatever you said about uh was it hang gliding what did you say was whatever you want to choose parasailing all of those things windsurfing those are all like quote unquote cool things to do on your vacation but like how many people do you know when they're on vacation let's go in that hot air balloon it doesn't happen very often but again i also think it's more of a coastal thing like a I, I, I see it as much more of like a Midwestern and, and West Coast thing than, than doesn't seem to be that prevalent on the East Coast. And I don't really know why, but um, I know that most of like the festivals and things like that are in, in like California. Well, but it's again, your normal Matt, if you wanted to go on a hot air balloon ride. 90% of the time, it's on a line, you just go higher, you hang out there for a little bit, and then you go back down. Like, that's not fun or interesting. Like, what is the... I do not understand the appeal of that. The, it's to say, look at me. Look how high up I am. This is amazing. Oh, Human look, beings should not be up this high. This I'm in is, a wicker I'm box. I'm defying the laws of nature by it's, being up here. Oh, I'm in a flammable wicker box with a giant propane uh, Yeah, that's engine. so metal. It's Think not about metal. It's so a hot air balloon. It's like, so metal. That's they come like, in bright colors awesome. and they, you know... Absolutely yeah, not. I'm in a highly flammable wooden box up here in the sky, and anything can happen. Amazing. Did you know that to pilot a hot air balloon in the U.S., you must have a pilot certificate from the FAA? And to carry oh, passengers, I don't doubt it. you need a... I, I don't think they just let any old idiot own and operate a hot air balloon that would be uh well then again they also they didn't they do that for the xfl didn't we talk about that oh the xfl blimp on our they had a blimp right yeah it, it crashed and, and exploded the day the day before the uh opening opening day yep right into a seafood restaurant uh yeah balloons must be registered have an airworthiness certificate and pass annual inspections Tell me, what, which one would you rather do? Would you rather ride in a hot air balloon or a dirigible? Matt, you could say, would you rather ride in a hot air, air balloon or, and just not finish the sentence, and I would choose the other thing. There's almost nothing. Would you rather ride in a hot air balloon or a, a an airplane that was on fire? Well, the airplane on fire would at least be interesting. I mean, Matt, <laughs> like, I'm not joking. My appeal for hot air balloons is so small that if, if we were, like, out in a field somewhere with nothing else to do except, hey, Sean, there's a hot, there's no line. You don't have to pay anything. It's just a hot air balloon. Do you want to get in and go for a ride? I would literally be like, no, I don't want to do it. Really? If the alternative was let's stand in this cornfield and do nothing, you would yes. rather do that? Yes, because <laughs> it's, it's, it's equal parts boring and dangerous. Yeah, but you could be standing around in a cornfield or you could be standing around like Slightly 400 higher. feet in the air. Yeah. Oh wow! I don't oh, know. This is great. It's it's like being. And a, then when you land, building. you could be. When you land, you could be in a completely different part of the state. But that's the if thing: you, is if, most if, of them are tethered flights. You have to be a that, real lunatic to do a hot air balloon <laughs> flight untethered. You're gonna. You are. You're right, Matt. You're gonna end up in the side of a mountain or in a telephone line. <laughs> Or on an amazing adventure that you would tell everyone about for years to come. Matt, let me put it this way. The famous story, and I wish I remembered the dude's name, because are you familiar with the guy who strapped all those weather balloons to his to his lawn chair? Yes, and, and took of off course. years ago. Legend. It's mm -hmm. Walters. Larry Walters, I think, is his name. Um, yep. A fascinating man, the lawn chair Larry. Um, 45 helium-filled weather balloons uh, that he strapped to a chair and he floated to an altitude of 15,000 feet um, and uh, and almost crashed into Los Angeles International Airport. Matt, would you do that? 
Uh, would I do that? I guess the first question you have to ask is how much money I would be getting paid to do it. But if the if the price was right, sure. See, and that's the thing, because that's it's basically a he basically made a hot air balloon. He has just as much control of that as you do in a hot air balloon. <laughs> I I disagree because in the in the lawn chair he that's uh I don't I, I don't know if he was some kind of an engineer but he probably didn't configure the uh, the capacity of that lawn chair to hold him up and keep him safe I think that most uh, most hot air balloons are, are a little more safe than than, than a lawn a floating lawn chair. Did he at least, did he have like a seatbelt like it, or was he Oh man. Just thinking about that is making me dizzy. Uh, it says he strapped himself into the chair. He took a pellet gun, a CB radio, okay. sandwiches, beer, and a camera. Uh, but what was he got the point a, of the pellet? To shoot the balloons and pop them. Uh, after 45 oh, minutes, okay. but the thing is, after 45 minutes in the sky, he shot several, but then accidentally dropped the gun overboard. Yeah. <laughs> Whoops. Yep. Uh, by the way, several people have imitated that and tried to do it themselves and several have died. So sure. you're probably better off not doing that. How come they, did, they never made a movie about this, right? As far as I know. He's a, he was a very interesting man. He unfortunately, um, took his life not long after that, but, um, the chair is in the San Diego air and space museum. Hmm. Yeah. I remember, I remember hearing about it and the, um, I kind of followed it a little bit on a, a documentary, but yeah, they could have made like a movie starring James Franco. That seems like a kind of movie he'd star in. Yeah. Very dr- It's like the sequel to 127 hours. Was that James Franco? Right. That was. Oh. Yep. Dude, dude cut his arm off. Uh, all right, Matt, that was hot air balloons. Are you ready for our next topic? Uh, yeah. Hit me. Pop tarts, Matt. Overrated, underrated, or appropriately rated? Pop-Tarts are hideously overrated. Over, well overrated. You're, you, you, you look like you just won the Stanley Cup. You're I, I, so happy that I said that. I mean, Pop-Tarts are bad. Like, they're, they're, not, they're, they're not even, they're like, gross. okay. They're just, like, genuinely gross. They're, uh... There, I now see this is this. I feel very comfortable saying this, and I, I don't feel like this is hyperbole at all. Unlike your statement about hot air, hot air balloons, if I had the choice between eating pop uh, tart or nothing, usually I would probably choose nothing. Agreed for breakfast. Pop tarts are the worst. Yep, I'd rather eat the box that <laughs> pop tarts comes in. Than eat pop tarts. You're so right, and that is the truth. There's, I have never said anything more true in my life. Gross. Absolutely. Pop tarts are terrible. Uh, I, I especially hate the, the um, cinnamon apple one. I, f- and and like the strawberry, really the fruity ones, I, I think are the are even worse because at least the at least the dessert ones you can like. It's not pretending to be like a substitute for your breakfast. It's like this is just cake, but flat and tasteless. So if you if you want to just like, I don't know, shovel a couple of these in your mouth, maybe you won't be hungry for a little bit. See, I, I disagree. I think the dessert ones are upsetting, mainly because I knew people <laughs> who ate them for breakfast. Like, oh, I'm having a s'mores pop tart for breakfast. And I'm like, that is the worst thing I've ever heard. They, I feel like they could save themselves if they, they cheap out so much on the filling. There's, there's really, the filling is really just flavored confectioner. It's, it is very upsetting. Um, it's, uh, there, I know there's like chocolate chips and, uh, uh, Oreo and Lenny, you mentioned the s'mores, but there's, but it really is kind of like a tease because there's, there's really nothing there. It's just, it's just the, like Crisco. It's like Crisco that they, that they flavored in a lab to taste vaguely of, of Chips Ahoy. I mean, it's, it's mostly just that sort of dry, crusty pastry edge is mostly what you're getting. 
Yeah, it's it's the worst part of a breakfast pastry in embodied like personify it's it's just awful so matt let me let me let me share with you i'm on the pop tarts website let me share with you some of the actual flavors of pop tarts you can buy and you give me the thumbs up or thumbs down on these okay mm-hmm. pop tarts chocolatey churro that's a thumbs down i think i'm just gonna probably thumbs down everything but yeah that's well, a thumbs these, down look if if you're the pop tarts blueberry right I'm going to say, look, I don't like Pop-Tarts, but if I had to choose one, like, blueberry makes sense to some degree. Okay. But but what Um, about Pop-Tarts chocolate chip cookie dough? That sounds like it it should be good, right? It doesn't, it looks disgusting. I know they're going to, yeah, the the way that, just the way that Pop-Tarts are, they would probably ruin it. Or, uh, Pop-Tarts, uh, I already said s'mores, Pop-Tarts chocolate cupcake. Again, I think it's the dessert ones that really kill me because all the fruit ones. Pop tart strawberry milkshake. Gross. How would how is the strawberry milkshake different from regular strawberry? Uh, the description: creamy strawberry milkshake flavored milkshake flavored filling inside the pink frosted rainbow sprinkled color sprinkled covered crust. Pop tarts are so dry. I feel like every time I eat pop tart, I, I need to drink like a gallon of water right after it. So I, I might as well just skip the pop tart and just drink the gallon of water for breakfast. Yep. <laughs> yep. I, um, I agree. Now, Matt, let's do a little compare contrast here, right? Sure. Toaster strudels, over, under, or appropriate? Toaster strudels are, I think, fair. I think I would say they're appropriate, appropriately rated. Um, maybe even a little under. Because I know that they were they did gangbusters when they first came out when there was like they were they were they were the like competitor with Pop Tart and I think they they really kicked Pop Tart to the curb because I I still today would rather have a toaster strudel now I, I don't often go out and buy them but uh, you're you, the 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 filling to crust ratio in a toaster strudel is more um, satisfying. Yes. Really. It's more satisfying than the uh, toaster, the uh, filling to crust ratio in a pop tart. I think that's really what it comes down to. It's well, like more, you feel like you're getting more for your money. But it's also the flaky pastry, too, I think makes a big difference. It's not that dry, baked to death outer, it, it comes out flaky. To me, the Achilles heel is they have to be frozen. I think that if they could come up with a way to have a shelf stable toaster strudel i think pop tarts would be a thing of the past Uh, you're just you have to wait to actually you can eat a pop tart at room temperature these babies you gotta cook yeah i don't know for me it's it's uh it's also that yeah it's it's the texture too the uh like you said flaky outside it's it's chewy at the same time. It's got it's got depth. It's and you know the filling is is tremendous. It's very good. Also, you got the icing on top. Yeah. Fresh icing right out of a right out of a packet. It's wonderful. Um, the Pop Tart really like has to completely has to step up its game. I I don't even know why people buy Pop Tarts anymore. I don't, They've got to be really cheap. I haven't bought them in years and years, but they have to be like really cheap. I, I think that's the only that's the only way. I could I could see it. Also, you get you get. I think you can correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think you get more pop tarts in a box than you do toaster strudels. Maybe they're maybe that's why they're more economic, like well, economical. And again, it's that sort of they're less. You're right. It's less expensive and just the shelf stable thing, right? You can buy them far in advance and put them in the cabinet, and the kids can grab them and go. And I, I you don't want to wait and cook your kid a toaster strudel. That that in my household as a kid, toaster strudel was like the weekend breakfast. That was like the we have the time, so we'll cook up a toaster strudel. That was not an everyday thing. Um, but I, you know, I I just I think I know a few people who are like pop tart diehards, and I think the reason is I genuinely I think the reason is is because when you were a kid, you will eat literally anything with sugar in it and think it tastes good. And I think it's 100% a nostalgic thing where you're so used to the taste. Because usually the people I know who like Pop-Tarts don't try a bunch of different flavors. They buy the same flavor every single time. I think it's just a nostalgia thing. Yeah, that's interesting. I I was definitely not a big Pop-Tart eater as a kid and and certainly even less now. But I, I I do know the Pop-Tart... Um, 
lovers, the Pop-Tart uh, uh, cr- crowd, I guess. I remember uh, people, you know, on, on their way to the bus stop to school, definitely, you know, here's a packet of, of uh, Pop-Tart, especially if uh, mom and dad are working, you know, they, uh, it's a very, it's very convenient grab and go breakfast. Um, have you tried any of the savory um, toaster strudels that they've made? Like the egg and cheese ones? No, I, I honestly haven't. I think I had a, I had them one time. They're they're not bad. They're actually they even I think they even do those right. So, could you imagine a savory pop tart? What that would taste like? <laughs> I'm su- I'm genuinely surprised. Again, if they could make one shelf stable, I bet you they would. Well, see, I think that really just illustrates the the difference there. Uh, a major difference. Pop tarts have to be sweet. They they're basically just like squares of sugar. Mm-hmm. There's cardboard sugar, and uh, like you can't make a savory pop tart because I know the it actually says the instructions are to put them in the toaster, but I know very very few people that actually do that. Most people, it's just right out of the package. Yeah, I that's think the, true. The, putting it in the toaster makes it taste a little more edible, but um, it's not. It doesn't up its desirability enough for me to to consider it a thing. Yeah, gross. Very gross. Okay. Uh, well, Matt, good. I'm glad uh, I'm glad we got to the bottom of Pop-Tarts. We agreed on that one. Let's see how you feel about the next one here. Looking at my list. Matt, tattoos over, under, or appropriate? Wow. Um, that's a very general... Not, not making it easy. No, you're really not. It's a very general uh, category there. K- tattoos. Huh. Um, I don't know if I've shared this with you, Sean, but I am I am not a big fan of tattoos in general. Now, I would never, probably see, never get one. I will say, because that's an interesting... Most people, when I talk to tattoos, there's usually a big difference between how they feel about tattoos on other people and tattoos on themselves. So we're, on those two axes, where do you fall? I'm actually... I would, I'm pretty much of the mindset that the only people... I think who should have tattoos are like athletes, maybe like, like people that work out a lot. I just think you have to be like, so, really so like fat, fat people off. cannot have tattoos. No, I don't think so. I think it's just the uh, people you've got to be like, really like very much toned and in shape. And that's the only thing like I can, I can see also if the tattoo is meaning a lot of people get like meaningful tattoos, tasteful ones. Um, and I, I know everybody has the right to do what they want to do. It's their own body. But I, uh, I think that in terms of them being overrated, I would say that tattoos are, I'm going to say that they're underrated. How about that? I'm going to, I, I don't, I may not like them very much, but I think they're underrated because, some people get really cool ones that that oftentimes people don't understand the meaning of, and then they uh, maybe find out down the line what it is, and and that's kind of cool to them. I don't know. This is a really hard one to rate, Sean. <laughs> I, I you you didn't make this one easy at all. I don't know how you can consider tattoos to be overrated or underrated. But what do you think? What do you think? I think you're gonna say that tattoos are overrated and that they're dumb. Probably. You don't know me at all. <laughs> I, I actually, I'm, I would actually say I think they're underrated, and I think they have a bad rap, and that's mainly because stupid, like you sort of insinuated, stupid people get stupid tattoos. I, I am of the opinion that our world as a whole, I'm gonna get really dramatic here, but our world as a whole does not have enough art and creativity in it, and I think using the human body as a canvas is a great personal way to let your creativity flourish. I'm not even one of those people who says every tattoo should have meaning to you. If you just want a badass tiger on your arm, I think that's great. And I think you should do it. And I, and I think it, 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 it just gets more sort of creativity and uniqueness out in the world, which I think is wonderful. Um, would I ever get a tattoo? No, mainly because I just couldn't commit. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't know what to do. 
you know? Like, I'm not a creative enough guy to, like, come up with an idea of what tattoo... Maybe this is a future Up for Debate episode, Matt, where you and I create tattoos for each other and we have to get them. Uh, maybe ne- maybe next uh, Sean Temper. Um, but I, uh, but I'm, I'm very pro tattoo and I do think they've gotten a bad rap of people getting stupid tattoos and tramp stamps and, and all these sorts of things. And I think it is a, I think it's a really cool, unique art form that has become a bit corrupted, uh, by the masses, like most art forms. Yeah, that's, that's kind of where I was going with that as well Is that it's a, also no fatties. It's an art form. Yeah. <laughs> It's an art form that um, I think is kind of uh, it is kind of underrated. I, I and what I was where I was going with that is that I, I think that a lot of um, it's like an adornment on your body and and people that are like you know have very muscular and stuff like that. It kind of goes with uh, with that that uh, mentality, I guess, like being a warrior, being an athlete, stuff like that. Yeah, and I, I even love the idea. Um, uh, I I saw this interview once with Wiz Khalifa. I don't know why, uh, but he was talking about his tat. His body is like basically from head to toe tattooed. He's run out of space, but he loves to draw <laughs> tattoos. So now he's drawing tattoos, and his friends and his crew are getting them tattooed on themselves. And the idea of of an artist, a creative person, drawing a tattoo, and then the uh, someone else getting it. To me, it's like the ultimate canvas. It's just such an interesting concept of the sort of permanent art that even if it doesn't mean something to you, it means something because the artist means something to you or the subject area means something to you. Um, and it's just more ways for people to get creative. So I, I'm anything that gets people more out of art out there, more creative, I think is is absolutely wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it is an opportunity for creativity. That reminded me, uh, there was a show out in uh, I think it was in the two thousands in the aughts, mm-hmm. where a man, um, it was one of those like Fox shows where a guy had like a like a tattoo on him. It was a uh, Prison Break. You, know, you ever hear the show? Where he Prison had the Break? map on his back. He had the whole map on his back. God, what a terrible show! What an awful. I actually watched the whole first season of that show, like as it was running. It's awful. Just uh, oh my god. Absolutely, just, absolutely baffling. It's it's baffling pretty amazing program. the the kind of things that I guess people put up with. In, and they uh, did like four seasons of it after they broke out of the prison in the first season. Yes, I, I remember. I, I never watched um, an episode after they had already. No, that's not true. I watched the first episode of the season two when they had already broken out of the prison, and I was just like, I don't really see where this show is going. So yeah, kind of never great. never watched it again. But yeah, whoever was in that show, I think was like a star at the time, and I don't know what else he did with his life. The, the- all I remember about that guy, and I want to make sure I get it right, is he had one of my favorite actor names of all time, Wentworth Miller. Yeah. Which I just thought was such a – it was him, and uh, Dominic Purcell was the other guy who's done um, – he does a lot of, like, The Flash, Legends of Tomorrow. He's done a lot of those. Wentworth Miller um, – oh, he's also he's also on uh, The Flash and Legends of Tomorrow as well. That's right. The two of them teamed up again. What a completely dumb premise, too. Like, he, I can just imagine him working in, like, a, the real life. Like, he's working out in the prison uh, yards there, and, and, a, and a guard just walks up. Like, what, what you got on your back there? Uh, oh, uh, it's, it's a... Uh, it's definitely not a map of this prison, if that's what you're asking. <laughs> All right. Solitary confinement for you, buddy. Can't let anybody see that. <laughs> Just gets locked away in solitary confinement for ten years and just loses his mind and show <laughs> <just over>. melts. Oh, <laughs> uh, gross! Um, yeah, there was there were a lot of terrible shows like that, but yeah, Fox that's had a, I guess a stretch a, where definitely an episode for uh, for another time. I think. Oh, did you ever see? I do have to say, have you ever seen the Joe Buck supercut? Where, where someone edited together Joe Buck for the last, like, 20 World Series reading, because it's on Fox, and so he always has to do, like, a Fox promo during the World Series, but they're always for, like, the bad canceled shows. Yes. And he does it in that Joe Buck voice where he's like, 
coming up this fall, prison break. Join these, you know, and he, or, or, or what they'll do is have the, oh, and tonight in the state, in the, in the, we're joined by the stars of the new Fox show, Happy Hour. So, so I haven't, I haven't seen that, but I would very much like to. But during the quarantine, I, I was actually, I was watching uh, some of the old World Series games. I was watching the 1999 World Series, the, the Braves and the Yankees. And uh, he, he did that. He did, there was a lot of like, um, live yeah like like promos like they do still have today like mm-hmm. promos for but none of the shows they promoted except maybe friends and i think they mentioned the seinfeld finale but the, most of the shows that they had promoted I, I just never heard of and i had to actually just look up there was one where um where monk yeah um was he was a he was in a show apparently with not i don't know i don't remember the the actor who played monk um Tony Why Shaloub. I, thank you, Tony Shaloub. Tony Shaloub and Neil Patrick Harris apparently were in a show together. Isn't that great? Where, where, like, but the the Tony Shaloub played like the wacky roommate, and Neil Patrick Harris played like the stable psychologist, psychiatrist. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't you think it should be the other way around? Well, we know that now. That's probably why the show didn't work. Yeah, it would. I, I it lasted. I looked the show up, and I, I don't remember the name of it, but it had a very generic name. It was like crazy or, or something like that, and yeah. it was it, it lasted. It ran one season, um, and did not get a renewal. Yep. And and uh, yeah, no, it actually looked like it would have been an amazing show if the roles were changed, and just you just make Tony Shalhoub the psychiatrist, like the sober psychiatrist, and you make Neil Patrick Harris the wacky eccentric guy yeah i just uh, i put it in the slack you can watch it later it is really fantastic um i was scrolling through and and just happened to to land upon the uh uh, all new next friday 9 p.m jessica alba returns in dark angel from the director of the terminator on fox you're like oh my dark angel i remember i never never watched yeah that was a james cameron show yes and they used to and they used to promote it all the time oh no it wasn't jessica alba who was in dark angel was it Jessica Alba? I think so. Or are you thinking of Alias? No, it is Wasn't Jessica Alba. Alias? No, that was um, oh, what's her name? Shoot. Uh, she she's in all those Capital One commercials now, and I think that's all she does. <laughs> um, she married someone famous. Oh no, Jennifer Garner. Oh, Jennifer Garner. Okay, that was Alias. Bradley Cooper as well. One of his first roles. Yeah. All right, Matt, are you ready for the next one? Yeah, let's let's do it. Okay. Matt, overrated, underrated, or appropriately rated? Classic cars, meaning that sort of 1940s, 50s, 60s classic car. I don't mean like Model Ts. I mean like, you know, what what a baby boomer would consider to be a classic car. Um... I'll have to say I'll preface this by saying I, I know next to nothing about cars. I I know as little about cars as, um, I think one person possibly can. I I, I am not a car aficionado, not even close. I wouldn't even consider myself like a, like a mildly interested in cars whatsoever. To me, a car is something that gets you from point A to point B, and that's it. That being said, I definitely respect people who are into cars. They, it's, it's, uh, it's something I wish that I, the mechanic side of it, not like the showy side of it, but I, I, I wish I knew more about them, mm-hmm. like how to fix them if something goes wrong. I, I would have absolutely no clue, which is why I would just probably call AAA. That's why I have it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm gonna say that the classic car scene to me seems w- w- wildly overrated because. I, to me, they're just pieces of metal that are kind of like put together to get you from one destination to the next. Yeah, I, I kind of agree with that. I would go overrated as well. I, I think the culture of classic cars, which is like, oh, it, it stays in my garage 90% of the year and I take it out a couple times each summer to buff it off and show it off to other classic car guys is kind of whack. Uh, you know, I pr- certainly appreciate history and I appreciate that people keep these things alive, but... You know, the fact that they do it as some sort of 
keep my childhood alive type thing is kind of weird. I guess you could you can say that about any hobby, really. Like, uh, I mean, uh, people could be really into computers, and you could say like they're just pieces of metal and well, but the, wiring. But that's, that's the thing just... about a car is like, if you're Jay Leno, you get to collect cars. If you're like your neighbor Bill, it's like no, he doesn't get to have a like like that. And it's it's not a collection. <laughs> he get to have a car collection. Well, no, but it's not a collection if you have one. You know what I mean? Like that's just you having an old car. I, I, yeah, I, you really have to be you have to be insanely wealthy. I think that's really the only way you can that's the thing about cars. It's not like a, it's not like Pokemon cards. You have to be like massively wealthy to collect cars. And, and, it's, uh, and but it's the same thing with owning a convertible and living in Vermont where it's like it just doesn't make sense. You know, you get to use it for like a week each year when the weather is decent. You know, if sure. you lived in Florida and you've got a classic car, OK, maybe. Yeah, it, it, it's true. It's it's also very much a, a regional thing. And I know there are like car shows and conventions and stuff. So it, it seems like there are enough people that are interested in them. I I wouldn't count myself as one of them. I guess I could kind of see the appeal. Uh, but to me, it's it's so ex expensive of a hobby, like not just buying cars, but maintaining them. Like the maintenance alone is is just incredible. The the amount of money and time you have to put in to to keep them uh, running and operating, especially the classic cars. So uh, I think it's it's just it's also like a status symbol thing. Oh, for sure. Because you have to be wealthy enough to to run and operate the cars. So. Oh yeah. No, definitely. I don't. I don't get it. But then again, we're millennials who will never have any sort of money. So that's true. I, I do kind of see that fad <laughs> dying for our generation just out of out of, if anything, out of just impossibility to ever be able to afford a car collection. So, yep. Absolutely no shot. Uh, now, Matt, let me ask you a question and you might not have an answer to this and that's a OK. Um, if you could have any car. I don't want to say in the world, but like any sort of car from the past or present, like you're a rich dude and you get to like go out and buy whatever, whatever car you want. Which car would you get? Do you have a particular one in mind? Um, I would say the 2004 Honda Odyssey. <laughs> really, really good uh, vans that year. I'm going to say that because that was my dream car. Back when I was in like, I don't know, elementary school, it was like a, uh, it was like a question. I don't remember where, where it came from, but it was like, what's your favorite type of car? And like everybody in class was like, oh, a Mitsubishi 75,000 and oh, a Corvette. And then I said a Honda Odyssey and the whole class laughed at me. And, um, I didn't know why they were laughing. Cause you know, my, 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 uh, my neighbors had a Honda Odyssey. And it seemed just seemed like a cool car. Like you could fit all you and all your friends in it, drive around. It seemed very safe. It's practical. Very practical. Yeah. And uh, I thought it was I thought it was very cool. You know what the coolest feature was, Sean? What? The automatic doors. Yes. The first car I saw that had the doors that were when you opened it, it I I thought that was such a status symbol. Like if you had a car that you didn't need to my car today doesn't have automatic doors. But um, if you, you know, I, I just thought that was so cool. That was just amazing. Now, if you ask me the question today, probably like a Tesla, Tesla seemed kind of cool. I'd probably, if, if, if money was no object, I would probably want to own a Tesla. All right. Well, that's a, a reasonable car. I like them because they, uh, are just like quiet and energy efficient and I think over, I, if you if you ever talk to a Tesla salesman, uh, salesperson, they they'll, they'll share with you that like owning a Tesla is like basically a, an invest like a four hundred one k investment. You, you've heard about that, like yeah, how it's how much money it saves you over time. And I I never really crunched the numbers to figure out how true that was, but, but they seem very convincing. So <laughs> <laughs> sure. <sighs> Gas is expensive. Oh, a day! Look, look, man! You, know? you just plug a solar panel into that thing, and you're off to free energy. But nowadays, um, you know, I, I live in a state. I'm privileged enough to live in a state where I no longer have to pump my own gas. 
the day that I go back to pumping my own gas, if I ever leave New Jersey again, um, I will be, I think I will, I will feel like I've gone back in time 20 years. Well, there, you know, Matt, honestly, I, I'll, I'll pull this up right now. Pumping your own gas underrated. I like pumping my own gas. Nobody pumps my gas except for me. I hate it. I hate it so much. I don't want to There's talk to I would, somebody. I, I don't want to interact it with so me. much. I go it's through the self checkout lane. I don't want to anything I can self service. I will. Sean, interacting with the gas station attendant is like the bare minimum of interaction. You 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 literally again, just it's you thing, just like, say the word twenty dollars regular, hand them your card, and that's literally all you have to do and say. You can go then right why back can't and I do that? password on your phone. Like, if I'm like going to have someone else do something for me, it better be something I can't do myself. Like, again, that person is doing the bare minimum. But you're not paying any extra for them to do it, which is the be most beautiful part. No. You're getting, like, a service for nothing. Yeah, Literally nothing. even make Matter money? of fact, up until Christie, gas used to be the cheapest in New Jersey. People would go to New Jersey just to get gas there. It's it's an tra absolute tragedy what he did to the gas prices. But that sucks. No. Um, I love it. It's, me. To me, it, it is one of the, it is in the top 10 of best reasons to live in the beautiful garden state. Well, New Jersey doesn't have a lot of good reasons. So, okay. <laughs> yeah. No surprise. Yeah, that's says someone, oh, the, says says someone who does not live in New Jersey. So it's right here. It's the third best reason to live in New Jersey. Someone else pumps your gas. <laughs> it's great. That it's can't be it's right. so good. I, I love it. I absolutely love it. Now my wife, she does not love it so much because she said it, t it takes longer, which mm -hmm. might be true. If you pump your own gas, it may be quicker. But I also I would counter by saying there's no risk of getting the gas all over your hands. Has that which ever is gross, happened to anyone ever? Smelly? Oh yeah, it's happened. It's happened to me uh, more times than I would like to admit. Well, uh, more than one is more times. It, it's it's happened to me more times than I'd like to admit, and I, I'm sure it's happened to other people too. It happens not when you expect. It happens when there's a little bit of overfill. If you overfill your tank a little bit, and you're like, um trying to put the, the nozzle back and you're also trying to close the gas cap because you're in a hurry. It, it, it's, yeah, Matt, I would never, if I, if there, if I could never pump gas again in my whole life and get away with it, I would consider it a huge mitzvah. Uh, Matt, you know what? I second thought, maybe it is better if someone else pumps your gas. <laughs> I just see you. Like, yeah. You remember the scene in Zoolander where the guys are having the gasoline fight. The models are having the gasoline yeah, yes, fight. That's yeah. how I imagine you pump the gas in your car. Whoa! Yeah. Just spraying <laughs> gas everywhere. Gas everywhere. You just come into yep. work soaked. What happened? And then I just, uh, I just say, oh, you know, the, this gas pumping has caused. I'm so stressed out. Let me light this cigarette. <laughs> There's got to be a better way. <laughs> oh, Matt. Well, uh, I will just state for the record, not that anyone cared. Uh, if I could own any car in the world, and one day I will uh, own this car, I want a. Uh, 1990 Saab 900 convertible in red. Do you know what car I'm talking about? Is it uh, uh, the car in uh, Christmas Vacation? That the no, the, that's uh, that's the Queen family truckster. No, not the one that they that the uh, the Griswolds drive. The one that the fantasy lady drives. The one oh, that pulls up next to them, I, I believe that's like a waves. Pontiac Firebird. I think. I think you're you're uh, scarily you're probably right about that. My, it's my brother's favorite movie. He quotes it. He quoted it in his wedding vows. So it's an amazing movie. I, I don't blame him. I, I watch it. I watch it every year for uh, the holiday season. Oh, yeah. oh, this car. Where have I seen this car before? It's just a cool looking car. It's like a toy. It's like a toy car come to life. It, it kind of, it's just a sexy car and it's, it's like, it's like, it's bad nineties, but in a good way, like it's not really a good looking car, but somehow it is. It's literally like you, like you took one of the toy, the little toy cars and just made it big, yeah, like it, reverse honey. I shrunk the kids style. Yeah. It's, it was that time in 1990 when like it still had a little bit of eighties coolness, but before cars got super ugly in the nineties. I, I love this car, and I knew somebody who owned, they didn't own a red one, but they owned a similar uh, model, and I said, I am going to buy one of those someday. And you want to know the best part, Matt? Do you know how much one of these cost? How much? Like 10 grand. They're very reasonable. 
Ten grand. This one's got a flat tire, Sean. Yeah, well, the issue with the Saabs is they haven't made new... Saab went out of business like a decade ago. <laughs> so if you have to fix one of these things, it's crazy expensive. That's why they're so cheap. Mm -hmm. But... Um, this is a uh, yep, convertible... See, the, I know so little about cars. I can't really. I, it just looks like a car to me. I mean, it's it's very it's a very cool looking car because it it is like a uh, like a toy. But the bumper, look how the bumper is so like out. Like you could stand up on that bumper it's and so ride beautiful. it. It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. It's just a cool so this is your great car. car. Like who would get a new convertible when you can have a Saab? Ooh, you know, I did notice. Look at the interior. The interior is that uh, that, that like off white leather. Yeah, that I like the interior. Mm -hmm. I'm Gorgeous. talking about the paneling. What, what kind of paneling is that? Uh, are you talking? Is it on the dash? You mean? No, or... not the dash. The paneling on like the oh, the um, sidewalls. Sides, yeah. Yeah, I don't. Uh... It's like a, it's like a carpet. <laughs> well, it's what what some Swedish. Whoa. It's yeah, it's like felt or like um, micro suede or something. Yeah. Yeah, them Swedes, man. Making cool cars. Anyway, um, Matt, we have time for one more uh, before we conclude this episode. And I'm going to look at my list here and see. <sighs> All right, Matt. Over, under, or appropriate. Places that are considered haunted. Way, way, way overrated. Okay. Well, we might breeze oh. through this one because I aggressively agree. Okay. I didn't know if you were like a spooky place guy or not. No, I want to be, but the as the years have gone by, I've been to sco spooky places. I I've kind of looked around them, and unless to me the the way that they like spooky places are spooky only if the tour people want them to be. Like they have to really play it up. Right. And to me, it just like it's cheesy. Like I, we, we we're, we're kind of a ghost tour couple. My wife and I, we like to do like ghost. Tour. We've been on a ghost tour of Savannah, which I do highly recommend, if only um, because the city itself is is pretty. Uh, I, I it's very enchanting during the day, and there is like an air of mystery about it with like the hanging moss and stuff. And at night, it is kind of kind of eerie. Yeah. But uh, we actually just went on a ghost tour of Provincetown. This this. Uh, on our trip to the to the Cape, uh, and um, it was not that great. Pro not 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 Provincetown. Provincetown is really cool. I, I do recommend if anybody gets the chance to go. It's a very happening town. But the ghost tour was not very not very great. There was one part. The first part they took us to was a uh, the library, mm -hmm. and they they uh, walked us to the doors of the library and told us the story about how like. Oh, at night, the ghosts, they mess around and, ooh, like, they, they move the books around and, 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 and sometimes, like, the librarians will come back and all the books will be on the floor. And, ooh, look, look, look right there. There's some books on the floor. And, like, you could tell that they, the librarians probably just, like, knocked them off on purpose and, like, scattered them. And, also, um, isn't that the opening to Ghostbusters? Yeah, and they also probably, they, they, I think they directly ripped off <laughs> Ghostbusters. The part they said right after that, though, they were like, but we can't go in the library because of COVID concerns. <laughs> but but if you look through the, the glass window, you can see the ooh the, the 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 um the books are on the floor and it, like they really I think they really have to stage the uh, the creepiness. It has to be staged there for uh, for anyone to to really feel the the, the vibes. I, I don't know. I've um they, there was one part in the tour where they walked us through the cemetery. And like told creepy stories about people buried there and Which is stuff. Like any cemetery anywhere. Exactly, exactly. I yeah, I'm not a big haunted things person. You know what I am a big thing of recently though is folk legends. I kind of like that. Oh, even way more. more fun, million percent better. I got I got super into them when we went to Iceland. Mm. Like because learning about the elves there. They, they, they like really are into their elves. If anybody who's been to Iceland knows, like the elves are a big thing there. Uh, they build little houses for them and uh, give them like gifts and treats and stuff. And I think that's so cool. I, I love little folk legends like that. Uh, right here in the beautiful Garden State, we have our Jersey Devil. 
who is hey uh, don't talk about chris christie that way you know <laughs> no that's the got uh, him that's the uh the the other other different kind of devil but um the gas gouging devil uh gas gouging and also uh beach going i guess bridge closing <laughs> yeah bridge devil. closing yeah yeah uh yeah so i don't know folk, yeah, folk legends i think those are highly underrated i i think um you know I, I i oftentimes i don't like to plug other podcasts on here but if you ever get the chance there are two there's the myths and legends podcast which is really good to listen to and there's also the podcast lore that's become very very famous in recent years with aaron mankey and um uh that also helped to to kind of get into the the feeling of like the local legends and stuff i think that's cool haunted stuff not so much usually that's just like made up garbage yeah uh yeah i mean i i, I agree with most of that uh, spooky places haunted things ghosts all that bullshit that's way overrated i think folk legends i agree are underrated but i also think there are a few like the chupacabra and even the jersey devil that are like overdone like i feel like some of the more specific sort of ultra local ones are the where it's like they're so insane because only the people who live there believe it those are the ones i get more excited about i think the mainstreamed ones are sort of eh. um Matt, Sean, they say that really the only way to appease the Jersey Devil, you know how to, you know how you're supposed to like appease him if you're ever if you ever find yourself in the Pine Barrens. Yeah, you get the gel in the hand, you go to the bars down at the boardwalk. No, he'll, he's going to eat you if you do that. No, you got to bring him a uh, a pork roll. Yeah. On a bagel, salt and pepper and ketchup. And you gotta you leave him two scratch offs, two scratch off tickets. With Honestly, that. if you gave me that, I'd be pretty happy. So I understand <laughs> yeah, where he's coming. That's from. how you do it. Bagel. Got to get the pork roll though. Oh, of course. It's got to be Taylor pork roll. Everyone loves some Taylor ham. Um, <laughs> Matt, I'm gonna quickly give you one more bonus one. Uh, over under appropriate Polaroid pictures. I'm hoping that we're going to disagree here, but I'm going to say that they are way overrated. Damn, I agree with you. They're this overrated. They're, I, they're I, bad I, I, pictures. This is a problem. Like I said, as, as the show has gone along, we are becoming too similar, which is... Okay, how about... Let's just do... Because we only did half my list, so let's just knock some of these out. Okay. Over, under, appropriate. Peanuts. Lightning round. The Peanuts. Food, the food, not the characters. Okay. Um, I'll say... The food, the food overrated, the character is underrated. Damn, I agree. Um, uh, croissants. Uh, croissants are strongly underrated. Oh, see, I disagree. I think they're overrated. They're tasty. I don't think they're, they're tasty, good. especially when they have filling in them. They're, uh, but that's different. I think just a, a okay. plain croissant is too light. There's not enough okay. to it. No, no, plain. Okay, then uh, yeah, then I agree. Uh, fuck, plain plain croissants are overrated. Yes. Uh, the microwave oven. Uh, the microwave oven is very much overrated because it makes things soggy. See, I probably would have gone appropriate, where it's like it's popular for a reason because it cooks good, but nobody gets like jazzed about the microwave. It's super convenient, but at the same time, like there are better ways of making everything, just not more convenient. It's it's the convenience machine. Yes. Yeah, but there there is always a better way to make something than in the microwave. Matt, emoji. Uh, just because of the movie, overrated. <laughs> We should do a live commentary on that. I feel like that would be <laughs> okay. so funny. Okay, yeah, I, I'm I'm down for that to be one of our one of our uh, Patreon episodes. Uh, and Matt, our final one for tonight: over, 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 under, appropriate. Our friendship, Sean. That's something that will always be underrated. Okay, I think it's appropriately rated. Are we going to disagree? Are you saying, are you, saying you underrate our friendship? No, I'm saying that. Maybe you should that, appreciate it more, Matt. 
I'm saying that our friendship is underrated because it's something that many people don't have. Oh, look at that. What a, <laughs> what a, what a great night in Sean Tember. Wonderful. Matt, I, I'm so glad we got to talk about a number of topics we hadn't discussed before. I feel like I learned something about you. Yeah, so, likewise. If um, anyone has I, any tattoo ideas for Matt, please send them to us up for debate the at tattoo gmail.com. Of a Pop-Tart. Yeah, yeah. Send us, <laughs> send us some of your Pop-Tarts and your croissants. And we'll gladly collect them. Uh, yeah, this was fun. Another another fun night in Sean Tember. Oh, and uh, we're only halfway there. We've I know, got, Matt. I know. And what's coming ahead of, of you. To go. Next week, I'm going to... Is, is probably the big blowout episode of Sean Tember. Also because I haven't planned week four yet. So, uh, But <laughs> next week, Matt, we're going to have on special guests. And you're getting a mystery box. And we're going to review what's inside of it. Now, you have no idea what's in the box. But all I'm going to say, Matt is I recommend maybe you keep a, a cool glass nearby, maybe some milk or something. Things are going to get hot in here. That's all this I'm going to say. This is like the third time you've brought up milk. I don't know what it, what's... <laughs> I, I, I just... You know me, I get happen. very good hints, as we learned last week, so... Um, I'm uh, expecting a, I'm expecting the Hot Ones episode for next uh, week, so... Just, uh, we'll see! We'll see I don't know how next. you're going to be able to ship a box of, uh, of of spicy hot wings from Massachusetts. Just don't open the box. We will see. And just, it just I know you'll hear some sort of animal noises from inside, just don't put your finger near the holes in the box. I'm okay? expecting to open the box up and find, like, the Tesseract in it, and then you're going to ask me to join the Avengers. I think it will be great. special guests are... I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you an empty box, and I'm going to have you open it and be like, sucker, <laughs> nothing. You get nothing. Um, by the way, did I tell you, you, uh, you pitched on, on the show um, oat milk. Or maybe yes. that was before the show. Uh, Duncan now has oat milk you can get in your coffee. Yeah. Oat milk and iced coffee. It's great. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Did not That's care my for new, it in the hot coffee. Thing. The hot coffee, I didn't care for it in. But the iced coffee. I haven't great. had it in hot coffee yet. It was too. Um, it was too creamy for hot coffee. I stayed with the almond milk, but in an iced coffee, it adds that creaminess that you used to get with cream that you don't get with almond milk. So, good job. You sold me on it. I'm finding the oat milk and the almond milk to be great complements for the pumpkin spice, which you didn't ask me about, but I'm going to give my opinion on anyway. Severely underrated. Oh, fuck Anything off. pumpkin is underrated. Hell no. I love Get pumpkin bent. flavored everything. Hell no. I wish I could have it all year. Get out it's of great. town. You're I love the worst. pumpkin spice. And I don't You're care. Garbage. Who knows it? I love pumpkin spice. You know, spice. Matt, we had such That's a good episode. Sean Tucker was arm. going so good. I love pumpkin And you just spice. threw it right in the goddamn delicious. trash. You son Absolutely of a bitch. Delicious. You love, son of I a love bitch. Love pumpkin. Oh, pumpkin. man. You're one of those. You're dressed like a damn pumpkin. They're so good. Unbelievable. They're so good. Oh man, I don't think so. Give me more pumpkin. Oh, well, I'm Every- gonna I'm gonna cancel that shipment to you now. <laughs> you ain't getting shit, buddy. Unreal. Un- how dare you bring that onto this uh, onto this program? They're so. I love pumpkin. I, Matt, I think you're what the kids call a basic bitch. Is that sure. right? Okay, that's fine with you're me. Basic? I love I love pumpkin. I don't. care. Hair. I'll wear. I, you know what? North Face looks like a comfortable <laughs> thing to wear. I would wear North Face <laughs> Man, all the time. Can we get you like some UGG boots? Sure, and, and I'll do. The look, whole they thing. look so comfortable too. I don't know what the big deal is. I would, I would absolutely wear them if they made them for men. They do. Tom Brady promoted them. I know they make they make Uggs for men. I'm talking oh, about. I'm oh, talking about boots? North Face. Yeah. Oh God, man. Which I'm sure they do. They look great. They look very comfortable. Oh. I, I definitely. I, I was. I was a, too harsh of a critic all those years. Judging the North Face and, and the we did pumpkin and we did. spice. We we went to North we did, Face but College, I, but now but now I I, I sympathize. I, I definitely I definitely yeah. agree. It what all is, looks comfortable and pumpkin spice is delicious. I mean, how do you go from Taylor ham, one of the most delicious things in the world, to pumpkin spice, one of the most unappealing things in the world? You just described literally what I had for breakfast today. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh my god! Pork roll, pork roll, and uh, and pumpkin spice coffee. <laughs> it's incredible. I I would absolutely. Uh, I would wear North Face every day. That is in the fall, Matt, in the if, winter. Matt, if your wife is ever looking for a real man, have her give me a call. <laughs> um, well, uh, we've got to go work on our friendship now. Um, but in the meantime, I hope everybody goes to debate.tv, checks out last week's episode if you didn't hear it, uh, and make sure to subscribe wherever you get podcasts for next week's episode, which would be great. You can, of course, follow us at TV on Twitter, or as I mentioned, email us, TV at gmail.com. 
Uh, but we've got to end it here before Matt says anything else that breaks my heart. So on behalf of Matt, I'm Sean. Thanks for being here for another episode of Sean Tember. We'll see you next time for more Up for Debate.